Welcome to Zipping TikTok Rant. Welcome to Zipping to TikTok Rant. You heard the girl. Welcome to something to talk about. And I'm doing a follow up video. That's right. First, well, not first ever follow up video, actually. <laughs> that before I started making just the Song of Ice and Fire content, I was doing Pokemon typing videos. And I did every follow up for monsters, Pokemon types. So um, I did do a follow up video before. But I did a poll on my channel where I was asking for like. Um, should I do Elder Scrolls and Fallout, or should I do something else, or whatever? Or should I just stick to A Song of Us and Fire? And Elder Scrolls and Fallout content one. So I have Elder Scrolls one filmed that I'm putting out after this. And I'm working on other ones. I got a bunch of characters and everything. But I figured, before I started covering characters, I need to just do a vault video, right? Like, just get out there. If you're going to do Fallout, you got to talk about dem vaults. And, yeah, if you don't know what's going on, <laughs> this is your first time here. My name is Taco. I yell at the screen. This is very free form. I do have cards I read off of. But this is what's going on, man. Let's have 13 volts. Um, yeah, no editing. Just boom, 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 boom. And, um, yeah, I do got specific rules just for my follow to know their scroll stuff. Um, but that's going to be more for characters, not really for vaults. So I made a list. Top 13 vaults. I uh, I will say um, spoilers for um, the Fallout series. So some of these vaults are from um, supplementary stuff, like just mentioned in the quote Fallout Bible or just mentioned in comic books. Uh, most of them are from the video games, of course. And it, we actually have some show stuff in here too. So yeah, um, the... Major, major spoilers going to be for the show one, because when I talk about a vault from there, I will be pretty much giving major spoilers for the show. So I'll just give you guys a warning before I show that card. There will be a warning on that card, and then you'll just scroll until you don't see it anymore, and I'll try not to talk about it afterwards. Is that everything? Are we good? We going to go? I think we are. Let's talk about vaults, man. <laughs> All right. Um... Number 13 is a tie. Okay, <laughs> we're not good to go. So um, I have a couple ties, and it's because these are pretty much like kind of the same thing, just in reverse. So I, I figured just combining them. Uh, I have another one later on, so this is kind of more like my top 16, really. But all right, um, there's a tie between um, Vault 68 and Vault 69. So these two are kind of a pair. That's why um, I, they were both mentioned. Oh, that's why I put them together. They were both mentioned in the Fallout Bible. And Vault 69 was featured in the first page of the One Man in a Crate of Puppets webcomic. That's what this art's from. Um, that webcomic was uh, put out as a promotional thing before Fallout 3. And it's really good. And, you know, I might talk about another Vault mention there. <clears throat> All right. Later on. Uh, they are both simple and funny. 68 was designed to contain uh, 999 men and one woman. Oh, wow. Okay, that's not going to be issues. Uh, that's not going to be a problem. And then Vault 69 was the flip. There was, uh, out of the 1,000 people that entered, there was only one man. So, um, yeah, just one dude and a bunch of chicks. Uh, and the art, he kind of looks <laughs> just like some random dude, too. He's not even, like, hot. Uh, <laughs> unless that's your style. I don't know. Um, or where was that? These vaults were to show the comedic tongue-in-cheek style of these, like, kind of random vaults. Like, there's there's just other vaults that are kind of brought up in the lore that's kind of more of a joke. There's, like, 20 men and 10 women and a panther. You know, it's just, like, crazy weird vaults that are just kind of meant to be a joke and not taken serious. Um Vault 68 being a um, reference to a specific type of act favoring females. I likely don't need to tell you what um, Vault 69 is a reference to. On the surface, these are funny vaults. That's kind of what they were going for. There's like kind of these background vaults. But in reality, especially Vault 68, um, they would be super dark and possible nightmare fuel. Yeah, it's like fun to joke about. Like, what if there's a thousand people but only one dude? <laughs> but like in practice, like with humans? Like, the ones that are around in this crappy world? That would be good. 
it's gonna get dark fast. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Moving on. So uh, number twelve is Vault thirteen. Twelve is thirteen. The uh, vault that started. At all in the first Fallout game. I can't rank it higher because there isn't really anything going on. Vault 13 is the Vault Tech Vault located in Southern California. Um, its precise location is west of Shady Sands, which we might get to later, in, in Vault 15. Um, and east of the Mariposa mi military base. The first ever main character named just the Vault Dweller gets sent out to find a water chip and does so. And when the Dweller comes back, the Overseer met him outside, or them, outside of the Vault Blast doors. And rather than let them back inside as a hero, they banish them into the Wasteland. Wow, that's a jerk move. Um, this made the rest of the Vault rebel against the Overseer. Honestly... The starter vaults in the games, 13 for Fallout 1, 101 for Fallout 3, and um, 111 for Fallout 4 are not very interesting. And if I had to pick one just to be on the list to kind of represent these starter vaults, um, I'm going to have to go with the OG. Why am I saying that? I'll explain why the other ones didn't make it on the list and why this one barely made it onto the list. I mean, this, as far as we know, this is pretty much like a control vault. Like, there wasn't really anything going on with it, and it was missing a water chip, and they had to go get one, you know? And then 101, it was just that the vault never opened. Like, that's the experiment. There isn't really one. It was just never going to open, although the um, the Lorne Wanderer, I believe, <laughs> went out, and then um, and their dad at one point, spoilers. But, like, nothing, there's no crazy experiment uh, in that, like, you know, there's no Panthers or anything, right? And then in Vault 4, it was just cryosleep. So it was really cool because you could actually see the bombs drop in, in Fallout 4. But then once you get to Vault 111, they just knock you out and you come back, right? So that's by design. They don't want the, the, the first vaults you start in to be crazy, weird experiments, really, because you have to just get out. You have to get out into the wasteland, you know, um... Yeah, so that's why it's like they're pretty much generic vaults. And I have to pick one of the generic ones. I pick Vault 13. It's the OG, yo. All right. Whew, vault 34 for my number 11. Vault 34 is uh, one of the uh, vault Tex vaults located southwest of the Nellis Air Force build. Field base? Force base. Air Force base. There we go. In the Mojave Desert. That means it's Fallout New Vegas. Uh, it's the boomer one, in case you're wondering. Not that kind of boomer, different type of boomer. The experiment was that the armory was overstocked with weapons and ammunition, like hardcore stuff, and it gave a gun-focused culture, uh, foreseeing problems <laughs> with a gun-focused, um, culture. The, uh, overseer had a remote link to the armory installed on their terminal, so not everyone can get in, denying access. The efforts backfired, and then rioting began. Now, you can't take away the guns, I guess. Quickly turning into a fallout, uh, the, the full-out rebellion. A rebellious group attacked the armory, taking most of the heavy weapons and equipment, and then fought their way out of the vault. The reactor was damaged in the attack, dooming everybody who was left. Whoa! Um, the ones that left, however, became a, the super awesome boomers, a isolationist tribe occupying Nellis in Fallout New Vegas. The boomers are like a tribe that treats the Second, uh, second Amendment as the only freaking amendment. And that's it. Like, there's no Bill of Rights. There's no nothing else. There's just the Second Amendment. It's like, we bear arms. Well, what are the other rules? Dude, <laughs> we bear arms. <laughs> all right? That's the only rule we need. <laughs> Um, they have a basic belief that personal armament, armament is at the foundation of social trust and responsibility. I love these guys of Fallout New Vegas. I really, like was kind of avoiding them because I thought it was just like going to be another like raider group, you know? And then when you go meet them, you're like, the boomers are so cool. And I always went and hung out with the boomers like pretty early on. As soon as I get the, like, some good guns, I, I have the Nellis. When I was playing Paul in New Vegas. Because I love the boomers. I love the idea that, like, it's just the Second Amendment, second amendment gang. <laughs> it's great. Um, all right. Number 10. Vault 75. Uh, this is the one underneath the uh, um, 
Melden, Melden, Melden Middle School in Fallout 4. Ah, guys, all right, this is going to get a little rough. The uh, guys at Voltec wanted to turn a school into super soldiers. That's right. When the bombs dropped in 2077, every designated family with a student attending the school along with the teachers made it to the vault. The children were separated from their families and escorted to the atrium while the adults were executed by the security staff. Whoa! Under the guise of receiving, quote, orientation. The students were told that they are being raised and trained to save the wasteland, but really, those who um, were intelligent and physically exceptional were, quote, harvested for their good genes when they turned 18 after being convinced they needed to take a vaccine. So, yeah, what did I just say? So, um, uh, duh, duh, duh. it's like they're being trained in weaponry and getting like kind of really big, like almost super soldiers. And the whole time they're being trained, like, Hey, once you turn 18, if you pass all these tests, you're going to be able to go out and we'll let you out into the wasteland and you're going to save everybody. So everyone who turns 18, they let them go. So everyone's like, yeah, Fred, he graduated last year and he's out there saving the wasteland. So we got to do it too. But really they just chopped up Fred and harvested him for his genes or whatever. We'll explain what that is. That's nuts. This is a dark freaking vault. Um, so it is not specified what the harvesting was. There is mention of organ harvesting as well as organic specimen being stored away. Jeez. Um, those not as fit but still displayed intelligence and obedience were recruited into the vault's science team after graduation so they just continue to move the experiment along right um though the others who weren't strong or smart or anything were just executed upon reaching the age of 18 after a quote ceremony quote celebrating their graduation they just marked them um and their bodies were incinerated after uh i'm just remembering getting into this vault like i remember getting into this vault for the first time in fallout 4 and then getting gripped by how dark and absolutely messed up every terminal entry was. Like, that's why this one, like, kind of really affected me. Because you go in, it's underneath the school, and you're like, this can't be good. <laughs> the, vault, the vault's underneath the school, this can't be good. And then you start reading it, and you're like, nope. <laughs> this is all pretty dark. And it was. All right. Um, This next one will be spoilers for the show. So when you see this go down, you'll be... Fine, but if you don't mind spoilers, it will be spoiling kind of the main vaults of the show. Um, but I mean, it made it onto the list, you know. So, but if you've already seen the show, you're good, right? So, okay, Vault 31, 32, and 33. Major spoilers for the show. <clears throat> All right, I'm as surprised as you guys are. Um, but I really love the vaults in the show, and I felt like these three needed to be treated as one, right? Um, these three vaults form a tripartite, tripartite, okay, society. Um, man, why did I use words that are too smart for me? That doesn't make sense. Um, the society is divided into three vaults to serve as a buffer against threats in case one vault is compromised while still being able to support um, one another through times of crisis. 32 and 33 are much like other control vaults um, with an emphasis on propaganda in the, in the promise of Reclamation Day. So especially 32 was like, hey, everybody, you know, keep being good at everything. We'll one day let you out. It was, it was really heavy on the propaganda. This is what vault people do. This is vault tech. If you grew up in 32, you really love you know, vault tech. Um, so uh, vault 33 fell early unbeknownst to 32 and it fell to chaos and cannibalism. In reality, the entire experiment, so all three within the vault was a program called Buds, Buds, a guy named Bud, devised by pre-war vault tech sales executive Bud Askins, who sought to use the three vaults to breed a population of loyal 
Vault Tech employees who would then go on to establish a monopoly over the waste after everyone on the surface had perished from the nuclear war. I loved this reveal. It felt very fallout, like for real. Um, and it, to me, it fits right in with other vault experiments and it belongs in the conversation when you talk about the coolest vaults, right? So that's why it made it in my top 10. And, and if you have this one as your number one, you know, like I get it. Um, you know, because ultimately, and I should have said this right away at the beginning, but like, this is just my opinion, right? Like, I want you to tell me what your favorite vaults are in the in the comments. Like mine, this is just me, right? The, what do I know? I'm just a dude who's played all the games and I really love all this stuff. So if you have a favorite vault, tell me what they are. I highly doubt that, you're, that our lists match, right? So... Yeah, please keep that in mind. I should have said that at the beginning. This isn't definitive, okay? This is just Taco's opinion. So um, I want to know your opinion. But yeah, what do you think of the show? I'm not going to talk about it anymore. Welcome back if you skipped over that. Um, But yeah, I loved the show ones. And I think they're really great. And that's it. That's all I got. I don't want to keep talking about them. So, um, all right, Vault 22. Yes, the plant vault. Before the war, the vault contained scientists working under the uh, auspice of uh, extermination with or experimentation, experimentation, there you go, with staple crops to combat global hunger. After the war, the scientists within the vault continued agricultural based initiatives with the goal of sustaining the vault population with plants grown within the confines. Um, designed as a quote, dream vault. People were selected for the population. The uh, vault were um, dedicated to such goals. And some of the most successful experiments were um, donated by defense contractors, such as the fungus that would eventually become the vault's doom. Yeah, good old defense fungus. Pretty much the the Last of Us zombies before there was ever Last of Us, okay? The, <laughs> that's what it was. The uh, in um. In New Vegas, you can explore this vault and fight plant monsters. It's a blast. It is a blast. First time I see this because it's just like in the middle of a desert and then you see all this grass and you go in there and you're fighting plant monsters and you find out they're all made by a fungus. It's awesome. <laughs> it's really cool. All right. Next one. So we made it to number seven, which is Vault 11. Uh, the uh, Like most vaults, Vault 11 was given parameters to conduct a social experiment because that's what a lot of these did. In its case, after the blast doors were sealed, the inhabitants were informed that the vault computer, um, they would have, by the vault computer, that they would have to sacrifice one of their fellow vault dwellers every year or else everyone in the vault would be killed. So they had to do a yearly sacrifice or everybody dies. According to terminal entries, the original, um, the original people... Uh, completely believed that they had to perform an annual sacrifice um, from among their members or else they would all die. They eventually settled on making the choice to sacrifice through democratic elections um, they were, um, where the chosen individual would be elected as overseer and at the end of their term, they were required to enter a chamber and submit to the ex uh, execution. Uh, this was just a ruse. It turns out it was all a lie. If the residents were to refuse, a message from Vault Tech would play commending the um, the dwellers on their choice, telling them that their, quote, commitment to human life is a shining example to us all. And like a party explodes, it's really funny, and revealing that no one would be killed. In addition, at that... Um, they would be formed that as a reward, the vault deck would be, or vault door would be unlocked. The only person who knew this going in was the first overseer, and he was the first one killed. I'm surprised that overseer didn't tell them, like, no, 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 it's just, it was just a joke. Like, don't, no, really, we can just not do it. But I guess he was like committed to the experiment. He's like, fine, if you guys don't believe in the sanctity of life, then I'm going to let you kill me and. I hope you guys have a horrible time. 
<laughs> yeah, it's probably what it was. It's like, all right, fine, screw it. <laughs> so they killed him, and then they needed to vote for another sacrifice. And at the same time, they were like, but we need another overseer. So that's how they combined, because, <laughs> you know, lazy democracies, right? Uh, why do two elections when you can just do one? The story of the vault is amazing. I can't get into it here, but it's tragic and chaos. Yeah, the actual chaotic, the actual story that happens, and I don't have all the time. Like, this is already going to be a long video. Um, th that actually happened in the vault of how it all played out is really tragic and darkly funny. So, yeah. Okay, number six. Vault 87. 87 is the major source of super mutants in the capital wasteland, so that would be Fallout 3. Vault 87 was originally a standard vault, but it was scrapped, and the vault was converted into a secondary research center that would study the effects of FEV, so the forced evolutionary virus, on humans. It, um, exclusively for Dr. Wayne Merrick. Sorry, I dropped something. Ugh. Dr. Wayne Merrick and his staff. Um, starting the uh, evolutionary experimentation program, there you go, uh, test subjects were turned into the cruder and more brutal super mutants that you find in Fallout 3. Yeah, Fallout 3's super mutants are kind of a little more animalistic. They're, they're kind of more of a neon green and they're a lot more uh, kind of more messed up. And Comparing that to like the West Coast ones, because the West Coast ones primarily were all made from like you, uh, like the Master and Unity, like they were they were made um, like kind of a lot more stable. Uh, and you know, in in Fallout Three, it was just like a vault that just had a big old thing of of FEV, and people were just getting turned left and right. So it. That's why the Fallout 3 ones are a little more messed up. That's what I'm trying to get at. Um, so they were turned into the more brutal certain units you find in Fallout 3. However, the project ultimately failed as one female died due to the massive loss of their brain functions. And all other subjects had to be terminated after a 14 days. Sorry. Um, after experimenting or experiencing increased levels of anxiety and rage caused by the mental changes. Yeah, because I got turned into super mutants. The overseer and his security guards were um, were well aware of the nature of their experimentation, but were just following orders. Hey, where does that come from? How does that sound familiar? We're just following orders. Um, a year after the vault was sealed, some test subjects broke free overwhelming the security forces. There you go. Super, super mutants mutiny. Super mutiny mutants. That's awesome. Uh, we'll make that band. You guys want to make the band super mutiny mutants? Mutiny mutants? All right. Or just mutiny mutants. Let's do it. <laughs> the super mutants kidnapped humans from all over Capital Wasteland and would bring them to the vault to be mutated. I always like this version of super mutants. Yeah, they're fucking awesome. Very scary actually so eventually just the super mutants just would go kidnap people and make more super mutants and that's how they're just all over in the capital wasteland right every region kind of has their own reason why there are super mutants like the west coast that was made during fallout one the bad guy was the the master and he would be like everyone was making super mutants there right so that's where most of them came like came from in the west coast and then capital wasteland was vault 87 and the Institute's making them in the Fallout 4 area, right? So, there you go. The more you know. All right. Um, vault, or number five, Vault 12. Yeah, let's get messed up. All right, constructed under the sprawling metropolis of Bakersfield. No one's going to get that reference. <laughs> vault 12 was billed as the perfect vault. I want you guys to know right now. If, if there's Vault and um, it's billed as the perfect one, that's the worst one. You don't want to go to the one that it's like, it's okay, nothing weird is going to happen. That's where all the weird stuff's going to happen. Don't go. Go to the crappy Vault, right? Where it's like, oh, this is like the lower class Vault, right? Um, that's going to be the Vault that's the coolest, all right? <laughs> Trust me. They don't care. Um <laughs> To, so where was I at? Uh, the vault's true purpose, however, was to study the effects of radiation on its residents. To ensure this, Vault Tech designed the vault door not to close. The door worked 
as designed and the radiation flooded in and those who survived suffered from a ghoulification. All right, let's let's talk about this because why do you need a vault to study the effects of radiation? That's what the whole world is right now. <laughs> like everything's gonna be radiated. You don't need to also radiate a vault. <laughs> like what's this? what are you talking about? All right, we're gonna light everything on fire. And we're going to free these people from the fire. But we want to study the effects that fire have on people. So we're going to light the people in there on fire, too. That's pretty much what this vault is. And it's insane. Vault tech, you're idiots. <laughs> okay. Um, in the summer of 83, where was I at? Yeah. In the summer of 83, 2183, uh, the survivors would leave the shelter. Those that chose to stay founded the city of necropolis yeah it's an entire opolis of freaking ghouls it's so cool necropolis also known as the city of the dead it's a ghoul city how awesome is that i love the idea of an entire city of ghouls and this one is one of the coolest locations in the first game it's in the first follow game the uh, vault dweller can come here to get the water chip because you're looking for one and set out a chain of events that cause super mutants who are like super mad at the, uh, at the uh, vault dweller to uh, destroy it. Yeah. You're going to get super mutants to destroy Necropolis. It's sad, but some ghouls survive and lead the quote, great migration across the waste leading the founding of such towns as gecko Day glow and broken hills. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, I just love the idea of Necropolis, of just this super metal zombie city, right? I know I'm not the <laughs> no, I'm not the only one. You guys can go. All right, number four. We're getting there, guys. I'm getting there, getting there, getting there. Um, as a part of a social experiment, right? I'm not skipping one this time, right? No, vault five. Boom. All right, I'm not skipping one. Um, Vault 4. Not Vault 4. Number 4. Vault 15. As a part of a social experiment, 15's population was uh, ensured to be a mix of a radically diverse ideologies. That's right. You get everybody in there. Uh, to be a mix, or, or <laughs> there was a schism among the dwellers of the vault. And it was uh, when the vault was finally open. Most dwellers left stripping the shelter of the best equipment, including the Gek. The Gek is the Garden of Eden creation kit. Most significant of uh, these was the village of Shady Sands, created with Vault 15's Garden of Eden creation kit. So, yeah, this is where Shady Sands comes from, was this group from, Bala, or from Vault 15. 15. The rest banded into raider tribes such as the Khans, the Jackals, and the Vipers. If you haven't played the earlier games, those are like some of the biggest gang or the like raiders, right? Like the Khans, the Jackals, and Vipers all come from 15. And yeah, um, the, the Vipers who started uh, terrorizing New California for years, all of them did. So stemming from this vault was not only the NCR, they're that group that founded Shady Sands. So the New California Republic, but the biggest raider tribes, making this maybe the most important vault on the West Coast because the biggest factions of the West Coast, like not the biggest factions all over, you know, like Brotherhood of Steel and all that stuff. They're really big factions, right? But like, the California, the West Coast factions are like those gangs, tribes, and the new California Republic that like takes over all the way to close to New Vegas, right? Like they got all over until something happened to them, whatever happened to them. Um, but yeah, awesome. So uh, that's why that's in there. Time for my top three. And you know, I'm tired of talking about all these serious vaults. Oh, it's the ghoul vault. It's super important. It's the... It's the NCR vault. Let's just, let's get goofy. You ready? Vault 108. Okay, all the important ones are done. <laughs> let's get to the fun ones. The premise of 108's experiment is um, revolved around intentionally leaving all standard positions unfulfilled to be assigned personally by an overseer. 
Also, the primary power supply was set to fail in 20 years. What? Just shy of half the vault's intended time span. Scientists in the vault engaged in a series of cloning experiments. That's right. That's right. <laughs> a holotape found in the cloning lab describes their efforts to clone a man repeatedly over and over again. That can't be a problem. The outlined it outlined the process and that every time the man named Gary was cloned, he immediately became hostile to all non-clones, all non-Garys. This is a pro-Gary place now. Screw the non-Garys. <laughs> with each one becoming more and more violent. Gary 54 exhibited the same increased aggression, this time injuring the doctor during the examination. The uh, the entry also states that they will be they were destroying some of the clones to make room for many more tests. Whoa. When the lone wanderer um, discovers the location. Only Gary clones and creatures remain alive. That's right. It's the Gary vault. The vault that's full of Gary's. <laughs> um, yeah, it's my number three for a reason. I love the Gary vault. It's super goofy, crazy. There's just a bunch of, I'm Gary, I'm Gary, I'm Gary. And they all attack you. Right? <laughs> it's the Gary vault. Gary's awesome. All right. Vault 112. Yeah, now we're getting, you want to get nuts? 112 was one of the last vaults to be constructed. I believe it's the highest number. Somebody might correct me on that. But it was intended for 85 occupants suspended in virtual reality. For the um, infinite duration of the vault's experiment, the vault was built to house and tend the needs of its overseer, Dr. Stantilos. Stanislas. There we go. Stanislas Braun, the uh, creator of the Garden Vision Eden Creation Kit, the GEC. Braun installed a virtual reality simulator and a uh, Visitron lounger. So people just sit there and they get into some um, alternate reality. Not alternate, sorry. Um, virtual reality. Initially containing several um, simulated utopias, or simulated, sorry, simulated utopias. The last of which was the Tranquility Lane simulation. The system should have permitted a selection of a few to live in the, quote, perfect life virtually, if not practically forever. They're just sitting there and living in a virtual life. What 112's occupants didn't know was once they entered the virtual reality pods, Braun would exercise complete control over the simulation and it they would become his playthings completely at the mercy of Dr. Braun. After becoming bored with various simulated worlds, he proceeded to virtually kill each of them. And each time after killing them, he would wipe their memory and resurrect them within the program. So they won't even know who they were. They were just people getting killed over and over and over again. It's so dark. This was the coolest and scariest vault when I first played Fallout 3. Um, living in a <laughs> living in a leave it the beaver world, right? Um, with Braun becoming a slasher clown or a crazy lady and killing everybody over and over. It's so awesome. I don't want to give it all away. And it's been a while since I played, but you could see the effect it had. It was my number two for a reason. Crazy. Um, love it. All right. So now we're at my number one, and I'm going to state again, it's just my opinion. No one else is going to have this at their, as their number one. It's obscure, but I love it. First time I ever read this, I lost my mind. I was like, this is the coolest little vault, and um, I dig it. I dig it a lot. And if I ever played Fallout 3 again, I would go find this vault's vault suit and just pretend I'm this character. That's what I would role play. What am I talking about? I'm talking about my number one pick, Vault 77. That's right. The Puppet Man Vault. <laughs> it was created, uh, this featured in a promotional crossover comic strip entitled One Man in a Crate of Puppets. Released to promote Fallout 3, Vault 77 was sealed with only one person inside on October 23rd, 2077. This individual initially believed that this was a mistake and pleaded for the others 
for the other effing people to be let in. He was like yelling at the vault door, like, where's everyone else? Um, with his pleas unheard and unanswered, the uh, years of solitude that followed took a toll on his mental condition. One year, three months, and 12 days later, he found a crate of puppets and immediately began playing with them. He quickly lost himself in his puppet game, and he started to believe that the Vault Boy puppet was talking to him. That night, he tore apart the uh, King puppet and then accused the Vault Boy puppet of murder. <laughs> you killed the other puppet. Dude, I'm a puppet. The Vault Boy puppet responded that it was actually the puppet man himself who murdered the king puppet, prompting the two to escape in fear of what the dog puppet might do next. <laughs> what? The puppet man left Vault 77 soon thereafter, uh, leaving the location uninhabited. Um, when, or he went into, went on to be a legend, and you can find the Vault 77 jumpsuit in Fallout 3, I believe in Paradise Falls. I love this webcomic, and I love the experiment. First time I read this webcomic, as I said, like, it affected me. I loved every bit of it, and I, I love that you could find the Vault 77 um, jumpsuit. Um, the slow descent in the madness and learning that the soft puppet man goes on to become a legend is just super cool. And I, I, like, love because right when he opens it, think this is, like, right after the bombs drop. <laughs> he, he opens it, and he sees these giant rad scorpions that have a car in each of their pincers. And he survives. Why? Because he's the puppet man. That's why. <laughs> and, like, people know of his legend. Who was around? Ghouls? All right. I love it. He probably got ghoulified, too. Maybe that's why they knew about him, because he lived on forever. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Um, do all the YouTube stuff. Click like, subscribe. Smash all that YouTube junk. And, uh, yeah. Welcome if this is your first time. I will be making other um, Fallout stuff. I will be uh, specifically making Fallout character videos um, and Elder Scrolls character videos. And the first one of that's coming out soon. And I'll explain it more there. But yeah, subscribe if you want to see this Fallout content. Let me know what you thought and all that stuff. What were your vaults? Do you 13 too? I just do 13 instead of 10. Don't worry about it. All right, man, go play with some puppets. Peace.